have come. My name is Tom Collier and I'm from Plymouth. Most people know Plymouth because they go through it to get to Cornwall, but it's like right at the bottom of the country. Um, before I met Christ, before I accepted Christ into my life, I think I was quite a lost person. Uh, I think I, maybe I didn't realise it at the time, but I was putting a lot of my energy into escapism. So uh, that looked like, you know, um, taking drugs, going to parties and living that kind of lifestyle, which started when I was about 14. Um, and that kind of progressed and I started, you know, taking harder substances. And I think a lot of my friendships were also based around that lifestyle. So if we weren't going out to get high, I wouldn't be that interested in hanging out generally. Um, and and really, I think that led to, to quite a lot of inauthentic friendships. Um, and also a real dissatisfaction with the reality of life. Uh, you know, I just constantly wanted to be somewhere else. Um, and w the way I came to faith, I wasn't remotely looking for it. It was completely unexpected, but I was at this festival called Boomtown. And it was at this festival where God grabbed a hold of me, shook me up, and he basically told me um, in a very dramatic way, uh, stop taking drugs, leave the festival, follow me. And I suppose for me, my accepting of God into my life looked like a, a steady uh, one foot in front of the other journey of obedience. I think uh, it became very clear to me that he was real, but then what does, there's one, it's one thing to recognize that God is real. It's another thing to actually accept him into our lives, right? You could accept that a, that a person is real, but doesn't mean that you have a relationship with them, right? Um, and so I think for me, accepting them into my life was a, just a gradual step of saying, okay, yes, I will follow you in what you say about this or what you say about that. Which meant I, you know, I stopped taking drugs. I managed to quit smoking and, um, and I ended up taking a big leap into, into ministry, into what I'm doing now. And since coming to, to Christ and accepting him, my life's taken a 180 degree turn where I was previously really all I was concerned about was getting high and, you know, having a party. And I wasn't really thinking about anything greater than that. And now I have the privilege of working alongside some incredible young people, journeying with them as they navigate difficulties in their own lives. Um, and also a big part of my role is fundraising for uh, for the night shelter that we run here at my church and getting involved with homeless projects and trying to see revitalization and renewal in the lives of people that we come across. And it's been an absolute privilege. Um, also working alongside an organization called Pays and they do some amazing work in schools and, and with youth groups and with churches and I would never have fallen into this had Jesus not taken a hold of my life. And I think it's just been an incredible, incredible journey. And I think lots of us can kind of relate to that feeling lost, right? Or when we're grasping at something to give meaning to our lives, whether it's money or success or uh, pleasure and hedonism. Um, but if that's you, I'd just like to encourage you to ask, is there more to life than what I'm currently experiencing? And to ask that question really honestly. And I think if you follow that question and where it leads you, I think you might be surprised, but I'd encourage you to, uh, to, to listen. And if God speaks to you, then to obey, because it's an incredible adventure. And there really is a lot more to life than may first meet the eye.